Okay, very good. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, let's make sure I get my screen shared. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Looks good. Okay, good. Let me start here. Okay. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks for having me, Marty. And I'm gonna focus today on the issue that we're solving. My name is Jim Grady. I am the founder and CEO of a company named Package Solutions in Atlanta. Came out of Georgia Tech about five years ago. We've been working on a product called Hello Package. Hello Package is here to address the last mile logistics issues we're all facing. If you didn't notice, e-commerce is exploding and the last mile is broken. And we are here to solve that. Uh, Atlanta happens to be the Palo Alto for logistics. We have a company here called UPS. FedEx is just up the road. Uh, Georgia Tech has the number one logistics uh, center in the, in the world possibly. And so we came out of that and we are here to solve that issue. And I'm gonna focus as, um, as Marty asked me to do on the business side of this up front, we're going to cover it pretty quick. And then, and then we'll come back to it later. Our CFO's on um, Bob Rees and he'll walk you through some of the things. So we have an initial opportunity in the apartment business. It's about a $500 million ARR software and services only. We don't count hardware revenue software for package and delivery drivers at 35,000 to 45,000 apartment communities in the United States. They're all suffering from this problem. They are truly the point of the sword. And so we focus on that. And then the second opportunity, which is a larger opportunity is a billion dollar plus opportunity where we take this platform and it's a platform, ties together all the carriers, ties together all the backend accounting systems, ties in all the IOT and apartments. It really brings it all together and that's for apartment, student housing, condos, office, retail, hotels, convention center, anywhere there's a high density of packages and people and drivers, and you have to keep it all safe. It's all messed up right now. It's getting worse every single day. So there's two opportunities for us. This, so let me just walk through the business side of this first, because that's, that's really kind of, I think, where you guys and ladies live. And it's a 41% gross margin, could be up to 70% gross margins, which is real VC kind of territory, annual recurring revenue, growing must solve, must solve problem in the last mile. Opportunity to have a big idea of a platform, large worldwide mark of a billion dollars plus. We already talked, we're already talking to the exit partners. You'll see some of the people on our team in a second. You'll see why. Very efficient customer acquisition cost. We sell one community at a large REIT or a large manager, and that ends up getting us potentially hundreds of deals. And unique technology, patent pending, uh, products fully tested in the field. You'll see some examples of that in a second. It's fully scalable. We've worked through all the details on our manufacturing, our installation, our service, and our labor. We should not at this point see a success fail where we have a lot of people buy, but we can't service. So uh, our team's experienced, um, myself, Paul Feveroff uh, out of Georgia Tech, uh, 11 years with a company called Parking Soft. So he did ingress, egress. We have Dave Caro, uh, who spent most of his career in operations. Um, and then Brandon Wynn for our sales, who has a lot of experience. Notably on this chart is we have the founder of FedEx Ground here. He started FedEx Brown, he worked directly for Fred Smith for 10 years. He was second in charge of FedEx, 450,000 employees. He's a multiple investor here, advisor, heavily involved in what we do. We have the uh, chairman of the National Apartment Association here. He was national um, chairman a few years back. He's a property owner. We have the CFO of Gables, which is one of the largest REITs in the country. We have a 38 year veteran from UPS. We spend a lot of time with the Brown Truck Company. We have the largest laptop maker in the world here called Quanta. They invested early with a fund called Mesh. We have the largest angel group in the country that actually serves as a venture fund called Venture South out of South Carolina. And then a multitude of three factors, tech, uh, logistics, and property owners. So here's the we're most powerful software in the world uh, for package management. We focus on two words that made Jeff Bezos famous speed and convenience. It can't be too fast. It can't be too convenient. That's his motto. That's our motto. You have to reduce the friction in the last mile to solve this problem. It's 
busted. My daughter, uh, the, there's a tectonic change happening. My daughter, who's 16, when a lot of us wanted to go buy something in the past, we'd get in our car, we'd have somebody drive us, we'd go to the store. My daughter holds up her phone and she says, Dad, I really need this and I need it in an hour. That's how she thinks. The store actually comes to her. 350 million products at Amazon. Uh, it's uh, growing, as you might know. So here's some facts. Uh, Two billion deliveries a year by UPS. After 112 years of not delivering on Saturday and Sunday, they're now delivering on Saturday and Sunday, as are all the other major carriers. Amazon hired 310,000 workers. There's 100,000, they bought 100,000 electric vans. All the stores are now delivering. Uh, Instacart is worth about $18 billion. 14% of packages are oversized, beds in a box, tennis balls, paper towels, you name it. 33% of packages are returned, uh, buy five pairs of shoes, some I mentioned earlier, and return four. That's fine. They'll pay for the shipping. Amazon will. COVID sped the whole thing up about four to six years. Um, and so what was growing really fast is already now growing faster. Everybody's ordering online now. I'm hearing some background noise if whoever can uh, mute, that'd be helpful. Um, so the supply chain is huge. Think of it like a water main and think of the last mile as the garden hose. You cannot keep driving wa the water main into the garden hose. It has to be thought through and redesigned and that's what we've done. So 20%, e-commerce growing 20%. This is, if you see the FedEx or the UPS person, this is kind of what it looks like coming at you at an apartment community, much larger in some cases. Then you see the Amazon driver, he's a gig driver. He gets paid $15 an hour, he delivers in his car. He comes all times, night and day, weekends, anytime he comes, she, he can get in, he'll get in somehow. And then you have Walmart and other stores delivering. And here's some of the logos that are delivering. 4,761 Walmarts, 1,850 Targets, 2,286 Home Depots, 2002 Lowe's, Best Buy, Sam's Clubs, Walgreens, CVS's. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And it's all coming to you if you're an apartment owner. So apartment owners get paid to sign white pieces of paper called leases. They make no money from brown corrugated boxes. They want out of it. They hate it. This is some pictures of what it looks like for them at their communities. So what happened was manual solutions took about uh, 2008 manual solutions. Uh, they basically take your package to give customer service. They put a brown, take a marker and put your apartment number on it. You come get it. If the office was closed, you couldn't get your package. About 2012, they were sick of that. The residents were sick of it and the apartment owners were sick of it. So they bought lockers. Fonzie used them about 50 years ago in Happy Days. They're about a hundred year old technology. They bought them from China, put some paint on them. The problem is if you have a FedEx envelope in a big locker, you end up tying up about 98% of the space for the next 48 hours. Carriers, drivers come in and just dump things in front of it because they don't want to take the time to load the lockers. So it ends up being a very inefficient way to do this. Now, those companies sold about 5,000 communities each. One of them sold for $100 million, bent metal out of China, not bad. So about 2019, we started releasing our software and product after working on it. And so did a company called Fetch. Fetch is offsite. They raised $32 million from VCs. They take it to a warehouse. You ship your packages to a warehouse if you're a resident, and then they bring them back. It's a, it sounds good, except the problem is you don't get your package in one hour. You sometimes get it the next day. So if you need that laptop for work, you don't have it. The other thing is you have to be home to receive your packages, which means you're meeting the cable guy, so to speak, 200 times a year. In our case, we're on site. UPS, FedEx, the people who do that the best deliver the packages. And we have a high density open shelf, just like Amazon warehouse system that measures the weight of the package. And I'm gonna show you how it works in a video shortly. So you check in fast, it's high density, about four to five times the amount of packages in a given space as a locker system. So there's really four options, manual, 2008, hallways, hallways sound good, let drivers go up the stairs because most apartments don't have elevators, except you get big packages out there, people trip, it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. And it also promotes theft because it's super easy to take a package out of a hall. Lockers I talked about, very inefficient. And then offsite, it's a model, 
It's just a model. The company that tried it before Fetch failed because they couldn't get their cost in line. Heavily labor intensive. What we built, and I'll show you in a second, band software, custom design hardware, modern sensors. We use weight, file patents on it. Computer vision, not buzzword. We're moving to computer vision now. Machine learning and AI. Computer vision will be our main sensor. Weight will be our secondary sensor. If you put those two together, what you end up having is an Amazon Go store. That's exactly what an Amazon Go store is. Computer vision and weight. And that's what we are. We're filing separate patents. We're in the last mile logistics space, not competing with Amazon. So let me just quickly, uh, if I can get out of this, I wanna show you, because I think it helps to see the system. This is on our website, www.hellopackage.com. This is how the system works. Can you guys, everybody see that? Can you see the video? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so the driver comes in, he has a code. He could have, a, he could have 100 packages. I mean, he could have, I mean, it's amazing how many packages they bring. Taps in, he has a one time, he has a permanent use code because he's UPS. Comes in, all he does hold that package under a camera. We OCR that label. We'll soon integrate with the barcodes UPS. As soon as they open up their network, we spend a lot of time with them and they're gonna open up the network so it'll be even faster. But scans it, we read the label OCR and then the driver who's an expert at this plays a game of Tetris anywhere there's space doesn't care. As soon as that package touches down, we measure the weight. We work with NCR, just like you do in a grocery store when you're checking out, like at a Walmart or Kroger or whatever. Measure the weight. We marry the, the weight down to 20 grams, really light. Ma marry it to the name that's on the package. So then what happens is we do that match and that resident gets a code. They get an email, text, email, whichever way they want to get it or both, or on our app and they get a picture and they get a short video of their package arriving, they then take their phone, they go to the door, tap in the code, and then they come in and we light up. If you notice, it lights up in green. It takes her about 30 seconds to find her package. Very dense. You can put a ton of packages in this little space. Some of our rooms are huge. This is a smaller one. And notice the big stuff on the floor. We take any size. You can ship a bed in a box. You can ship tennis balls. It doesn't matter what you ship. It's no problem. And we, we do that. That person picks up their package. If you notice it turned red, thank you. See you later. That's it. That's the entire experience. We process. We, we manage the carriers outside. We manage the packages coming in. We manage the drivers. We manage the returns. And we manage soon delivery to your apartment and inside your apartment which is crazy, which means my grandfather would have thought it was magic. You order something on a phone and it ends up in your apartment. You don't like it anymore. You push a button and it goes away. Somebody comes and takes it. We're almost to that level. We're one click away. We're signing a, hopefully going to sign an agreement where we can deliver in apartment. So there's a room addition. It's a rector set. It's, there, there's a ton of technology that we built into this thing. And then it goes into a container addition. So if you don't have a room, you expand your space and you have a software only edition. This is a picture of the container, single, double, triple wide. So you can drop a room at any location. The picture of the mobile app. So here's some of the customers that signed up. They're calling us the Tesla of the market. We have a market niche where we are the most sophisticated and a lot of developers, a lot of people who have these nice properties are wanting to use. We have 16 customers. They own or manage 4,600 communities. We have the number one apartment manager in the country, Graystar. We have Lincoln. They have doing, doing business with us now. Pinnacle, Bazudo, Essex, largest apartment owner on the West Coast of the United States, $14 billion REIT, uh, 254 properties in California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Toll Brothers, First Communities, et cetera, et cetera. They're all using the system, seeing how it works, and starting to roll it out. So this is our breakout year for sales. So here's a couple of the properties to show you a few. This is a Palmer. Uh, we just got this deal, uh, new development in Birmingham, first class, overlooking the ball fields, really amazing property by Daniel. This is the arguably one of the top properties in the United States. It's called 500 Folsom, 42 floors of love. I call it downtown San Francisco, overlooking the Bay Bridge uh, by Essex, largest apartment owner on the West Coast. 7,000 packages we managed for them in December in one month, 7,000 without breaking a sweat. Um, this is Woodfield. They've given us almost their whole portfolio. They have 17, 18 properties. They're giving them to us. Uh, this is Greenville. This is Atlanta, the 
uh, Atler at Brookhaven happens to be very, very close to where I live and Robert Mason, we happen to be neighbors, but really close to where we live, first communities. This is Pratt, um, the Residence Congressional Village in Rockville. This is a cool property for a lot of you folks that live down in Florida. This is Eden Los Olas, this is Lincoln. This is a, another premier property. Uh, they're gonna expect high volumes there, high tech solution. This is not even, they're, they're still moving dirt here. This is Lincoln in Nashville, Pennington Bend. Uh, this is Caraway in New York uh, by Toll Brothers. So our revenues, we started 19, kind of pushing into the market. Uh, COVID hit 2020, did about 300,000 revenue, 38 properties, really testing, make sure we got things right. This year we should break out and hit our 1.5 million plus ARR software only, about 200 properties. And then from there, because it's a formula where we sell one, that property owner owns many properties in many cases. And in, in, in Graystar's case, they manage and own, but they have 2,500 properties, right? So it's a huge, huge opportunity. And um, so we think we'll start ratcheting and get up to the 80 million mark in 2025. Could be larger. We make $11,400 software and services, 41% up to 70%. We do not count hardware revenue, $11,400 per community per year. Very sticky, doesn't disconnect. Jim, when you talk um, about communities, are these mostly like suburban, like, uh, you know, five story and below communities or are these like? It's about 250 units, 200 to 200 is probably the break point. You got to, you have to have enough complexity, right? 200 units. It could be a little lower, but it's usually 200 units. And it, if you find a lot of people in these A-class properties buy everything online, everything. They don't even, they don't even go to a store. So we have units that are 600. We're getting ready to sign a deal, I think, in Connecticut where it's almost 700 units. They're getting 7,000 packages. A and month. these are all A-class properties. Uh, almost all of our properties are A-class. Now, here's the thing to note, and Bob Rees will talk about it too, but 1,200 new communities come online that are, you know, they, they're delivering every year. They all have a package room. They have nothing in there. And they are they are prime target for us, number one, because they want the highest tech Tesla. They want the coolest stuff. And we're developing now. We're on iPhone one. I mean, they see where we're going. Right. So, um, you know, I'll keep rolling. Yeah, stop me if you want me to. Yes, but we raised about eight point three million so far. We have five hundred thousand committed on a two point five million dollar note, which means two million is open. We're trying to close that out. That will that's a, we're a tweener. We closed our Series A, COVID hit. We're trying to get the Series B. It's all going toward our sales and marketing primarily. And we have a huge market to go after right now. We need salespeople, we need marketing, right? And then we think we'll really drive our valuation for Series B. Are all of your assumptions, all, are, are all yeah, of please, your assumptions yeah. domestic, Jim? These are all domestic U.S. or is this is all U.S. We think we have an opportunity in Canada and France. We have investors all over the world. We have China. We have France. We have Germany. We have uh, we have really everywhere. Israel. They all are investing because they think we can go there in the apartment side and student housing. Right. And then you start working in the office. It becomes crazy. It's just the numbers are so large. You can't even get your mind around it. And that's not hyperbole. You'll find this out about me. You talk to our investors. I do not hyperbole. It's just a very large market and it's busted. So um, it, somebody's going to fix it. I promise you. I'll live long enough to see it fixed. Whether it's me or not, you guys can decide, other people can decide. But we have worked really hard on it. I mean, we have taken this thing apart. It has been a brain buster. Let me tell you, nobody should take this problem on. It's crazy. But I think we've solved it. I mean, it's really a hard problem. Uh, UPS kind of pats us on the head like, you guys are crazy. Um, but they also and, 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 spend a lot any of thoughts time. about a progression of international. You're saying Canada's next, and then uh, France, <laughs> other Europe. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have so much to say grace over in the United States right now. You know, like we're still trying to just get our great, like Lincoln, second largest, right? Half the size of Grace Star, but huge, right? Huge. They sponsored us for our back end accounting system called Yardy. You got to be sponsored. They sponsored us, right? Graystar is introducing it. The Southeast is their biggest, hottest area, as you all, you all know. But Graystar is, we're presenting to every person in Graystar in the Southeast. They are sponsoring us to present. They're trying to make us a preferred vendor 
for this package 2.0 because they got so many people asking for this stuff. So um, we're top 10 innovative company in the state of Georgia. TAG has 30,000 member technology association in Georgia. They've made us one of the top 10 innovative companies in the state last year. There's thousands of companies here in tech. Uh, Idea Award, we won an industrial design award called the Idea Award, which is like winning a Grammy. We won that in 19. So anyway, we're a heavy tech company, no kidding. Uh, we uh, uh, busted our rock. So uh, raising 2.5 million convertible note, 5% coupon, 20% uh, discount, 25 million cap. Uh, we think it's a good time to come in. Bob will talk about this more. Uh, and mainly because we think we can get a series. We're, all, we're talking to a ton of VCs. Um, they just want us to get a little bit more AR and I think they'll invest, right? We may have somebody come in now, another VC. But anyway, product, uh, sales and marketing, product development operations. Uh, $2.10 to 380 per door, per apartment, per month. And they can justify that 50 ways from Sunday. I'll show you quickly. Uh, one lease ever pays for the entire system, high return on investment, fast payback. And this is a complicated little thing, but just follow it for a second. 520 hours a year, they spend on packages now. 36 hours to get a lease. 520 hours a year, they spend on brown boxes. 36 hours gets them a lease. So it's 14 leases. Well, a lease is worth about $17,000 a year times 14 to 240,000. We'll save them 75% minimum of the time they're spending now on boxes, which means they get a 20% multiple. So it's crazy. It's a $3 million hey, Jim, payback. Jim, can you talk a little bit about class A um, apartments? So, you know, I, I think in workforce housing, you know, there's a couple of guys who probably, you know, own a huge chunk percentage of it, right? Is, is class A kind of like um, uh, more broken up or are there some firms that tend to own large percentages of it. So in, in the apartment business, you have three, the way I think, the way I break it out is three groups, right? You have apartment owners, you have apartment developers, and you have apartment managers. Add architects into that, you know, because they're upstream. But those are the three groups. The REITs are all three, as we all know. And we're dealing with a lot of REITs. We're dealing with a lot of developers because it's the new properties coming online. They want the coolest stuff, right? So we get that market. The apartment owners, some of them have put in lockers, but the lockers are failing. At the margin, do you buy more bent metal or do you go to a different technology? That's what they're faced with now. Do they really keep adding lockers and where do they put them? They know they're inefficient. So that's that market, right? And then the, the final part is the managers and the managers all want to really bring the coolest stuff to their, you know, their customers, which are the owners. So that's why we're seeing Graystar and Lincoln and all that. Almost every property we deal with is a class A. And the class A's, a class B, it might look like a class B in Washington, DC, but it prices as a class A, which means it's a class A, right? So it's not by how it looks or when it was built, it's about how the rent kind of rolls out, right? So anywhere 1200 to $1,500 a month and up, uh, we tend to play well with. A lot of those people don't have a car. How do they actually buy things, return things, they buy online. They don't have a car. So Does this include like uh, co-ops and can't condominiums as well? Uh, so that's one of the markets we put on there and we're very disciplined, right? We, we don't even talk about student housing. So you can easily extrapolate the technology that was designed to work in all these markets. We start out with apartments. That's all we talk about. And somebody says, well, what about student housing? We go, that would be in our roadmap. And then the same thing for, as you mentioned, condos, right? We're already seeing both of those groups come to us and say, please give us a proposal. Our pipeline is completely full right now. We have over 200 deals in our pipeline that have asked for a proposal that have been qualified and we're strict how we qualify. So we have a ton of sales uh, process in place right now. A ton. And so we're trying to just add to that so we can own this piece of the market. We think it's a very, very uh, lucrative uh, thing. Not You don't switch out of this very easy. Once you put it in, we're a software company and a service company. Gotcha. Yeah. So with that, let me, let me, let me, because I want to get in the financial part, because I told Marty I would. I want to put on my Wharton hat here for a second. And um, um, so, Bob, would you just kind of quickly walk through kind of your thoughts? He's CFO, super experienced guy, and in, uh, he's fractional with us, but he's been here, really done a lot of work. And um, would you just kind of 
walk everybody through what you're thinking, Bob. Yeah, hi. I uh, appreciate you guys letting me uh, crash your party late. So that's why I'm signed in under Jim's uh, Jim's ID. But my name is actually Bob Reeves. Uh, as Jim mentioned, I'm a fractional CFO. Uh, work with a number of uh, companies and various SaaS and payment uh, uh, payment network companies, and um, and been fortunate to join the team here. And feel like I joined them at the right time because this is really a uh, an interesting time in the company's history. As uh, Jim mentioned, we're we're bridging, we're getting bridge financing to get to the B round um, and to set up the, the B round, we really wanna be at a minimum of 1.5 million ARR. I think we can get well past that. That would be late 2021. Uh, you're looking at the, 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 the metrics and the, the, the multiples on uh, companies financing and, and based on where we'd be growth wise. And from that ARR, I would expect a multiple, you know, Mature SaaS companies get five to ten. The growth ones get, you know, anywhere from twenty to you'll see as high as fifty for hyper growth, high margin. Uh, we're not going to be in that high end of the spectrum. We're going to be probably in the call it fifteen to eighteen multiple of ARR. Uh, and so I would expect, um, I would expect that at that point in time, uh, you know, late twenty twenty one when we go out to do the B round, probably be in that that. $30 million valuation range, maybe a little bit higher depending on uh, how we're executing. Um, you know, one thing on the the, the ARR projections that, that, that Jim touched on earlier, just to reinforce the point, that's a, a direct sales model. And so th this has all been built out based on a direct sales force. There's efficiencies based on once we establish a relationship within a portfolio, selling multiple properties in that portfolio, and it's all modeled out that way. So there's a lot of detail behind this. There are opportunities in the market to, to work with partners that will basically speed up that, that process and, uh, and, and bring the opportunities uh, shorter term. And within this segment, just the residential, just the, these apartment communities, a direct sales model and laying it out and, and uh, projecting out that ARR. And so I, I again, I, <laughs> I have no skin in the game. So I think that's one of the reasons why Jim likes having a fractional CFOs because if I didn't feel like this was the right investment, I'd, I'd be telling you guys. And there's there's obviously the risk on, on executing at a high level in the sales, implementing it, getting installed, uh, and getting up and running. We've done the analysis on the pricing, so we know the margins are right. We know where the operating leverage is in the business, so we know how the business will scale. It's just execution on sales and implementing uh, properties. So basically the B round, which will be, I'm projecting the last round that we'll need to, to finance so we can actually finance the remainder of this segment and also into to adjacent markets. Uh, the, the goal is to raise about $8 million in that round if we assume that that round is priced out at about $30 million, and again, the 20% discount that, the, that this, this debt will convert that uh, basically means that, you know, on exits, you can do exits at multiple levels. And, you know, you can start as low as a $50 million exit and go as high as, a, you know, just for this analysis, go up to 225 and that gets you, uh, you know, multiple on the money invested of, of one five on the low end. That, that would be a quick exit, by the way, based on, on protected ARR. And then you go up to 225, 250, you'd be a seven times multiple. And again, looking at the, the ARR that's projected, you can kind of start looking at it and saying, based on a more mature SaaS model and getting that five to 10 multiple, then you can kind of start to look out and say, well, based on those, those valuations, when would that exit be? And so, you know, the, the getting seven times return at a 225 million exit would be late 2024. 100 million exit late 2023. Again, that's still being valued just within this segment. So I think there's uh, a lot of opportunity beyond that. Um, and again, I'm more than happy to ask, uh, you know, to answer detailed questions on the pricing and kind of thought behind it. But uh, like I said, I feel really confident on the work we've done, the analysis from the, the team, the operations team, and, and pulling the data and getting the pricing set. And then we're getting feedback in the market to understand how that pricing matching up with their expectations. And I think, to be honest, we're just scratching the surface on the opportunity that because we're still within a segment of the market to have it priced a certain way. Once we close the B round and we can start working with third-party leasing companies, we can start, start to structure. And we can make it an all OPEX solution at that point, right? Exactly. So you can pay $10 a month, 
I don't, you know, I don't cover all this and it's too much information, but we can get it to 995 a door per month. And that includes everything. And that's what Fetch charges right now. Fetch has raised 32 million. Even when we raise our B round, we'll be at 18 million, give or take, uh, 19 million. So we're <clears throat> very efficient with our capital compared to, the, you know, Fetch. And it's, you know, we're at 995 a door. And they can mark it up. The apartment owners mark that up to $12, $15 a door. That's what they do with Fetch. That's what they do with Trash Valet. Yep. So let's so, stop. So, uh, Jim, Bob Jim, didn't say he's with Acuity. He's a third party. They, they do all the accounting just about for every high-tech company. In, Great. Probably in Jim, I, I do have a couple of questions. We've got like two minutes. Yeah, please. Yeah. I know uh, we're running so, thin but, with time. Uh, so, so, you know, you're a software tech company. How many yep. employees do you have right now? And like, you know, as you raise this capital, how... How many employees do you see growing to? Yeah, so we, that's a great question. So we have 16 full-time employees right now. Um, we have a 20,000 square foot warehouse where we do final assembly. We don't do any manufacturing, anything like that. We assemble, test, uh, pack, and ship. So <clears throat> um, we outsource a lot of our development overseas. And I'll just tell you, we have put a tremendous amount of energy. And I'll go, anybody, any operations person, anybody... We put a lot of energy in to scale. And so we've done all that heavy lift. Can you hear me okay? You guys might repeat that, well, repeat that last statement. You froze up. Okay, so we, I want, what I'm saying is we've done a lot of uh, upfront infrastructure in terms of scale, in terms of manufacturing. We're going to co-manufacture US Asia. Uh, that's going to start shortly, drop our cost quite a bit. We're really uh, whittling on the cost. And so the reason I'm saying that is uh, we had to set up our company to handle the gray stars and the Lincolns of the world. They're huge. They're massive. So they're buying from us now. So we set all that up. So I don't think we're going to have to add a ton of overhead. And I think Bob would say the same thing. We are very efficient in how we think this model through. We've had some wonderful, phenomenal people help us think uh, it through. It's a great thing about software companies and tech companies. You can run very light in terms of personnel. So that's right. right. And we can outsource. We outsource everything uh right right so, so the manufacturing is out, outsourced the installation implementation is outsourced. is outsourced to two very large companies we're the smallest customer they have by far they do all of our installs we put it in in one day bang in Fine. out and, and and just is is there a part of this that's uh, the product that's maintained like the software technology is it maintained in the u.s or, or how does that work we have engineering, we have mechanical engineering, we have software engineering, very small team in the US. And then we manufacture, uh, or we build all of our um, code in Albania. Uh, we're, we're, our, our CTO is Russian, he's from Moscow. So they do the best computer vision work probably in the world over in the you know, former block. So we use them to build all of our uh, computer vision stuff right now. And all that, they do our heavy lift. It's about a third the cost. Well, Jim, Jim, this is great. This is good stuff. And uh, I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing your further progress. So uh, I love the video. I think it really gets the point across pretty quickly. Uh, would love to get more expansive uh, information about how you play in, in more urban areas. Although I don't know where, how much, you know. Classic. Yeah, no, we, we work to, to your question. We, we work dead center of Manhattan. We'll work dead center of Pickett in Texas, right, or Georgia. So we do garden style, mid rise, high rise. It works equally well on all three. Perfect. We work with a concierge, without a concierge, and nobody asks, but this is the slide of how we handle security because everybody usually says, hey, what about security? We've really thought that through at a granular level, right? Security, and we have multiple layers of security built into the system. Who, it is a like, very bad place to steal anything. Agent? Say that one more time. Who's the IP attorney? So our IP attorney is Fenwick and West. So our uh, the partner that manages all computer vision. Computer vision is our future for everybody, right? We're all going to go to Burger King, and, and you know it's on your phone already. So, uh, but our partner manages uh, computer vision. He's the partner for Facebook, so he's filing our patents on computer vision. It will become our primary sensor. We already have it running in the lab, and I can show it to anybody that wants to see it. It's amazingly cool. It is super cool. And then we'll use weight as our confirming technology, which that means is we'll have a much better accuracy, like finite accuracy of everything going on in the room. We build dashboards for all our customers. They can see their whole portfolio, every video feed, 
like uh, we'll say one more thing and I'll, I'll, I'll let you move on because I know you got to meet your clock is uh, if I had more time, I can pull up every room we have in the country. It's really super cool to see. I can pull it up and we can go around the entire United States and look at package rooms like real time. It's super cool. And so, you know, if anybody's interested, you're interested in investing, I'll walk you through that. We have a full investor data room set up, an IDR has everything about our company in there. It's all organized. Uh, so we're, we've done due diligence twice with VCs. So I think we're, uh, I think we're buttoned down. We're pretty much uh, Wharton tight, as they say, you know. Fantastic, so, um, Jim. That's really yeah. great. Well, listen, appreciate it. And, you know, please keep us abreast of everything. Uh, we'll get more information out to you. And I'm sure a lot of people will want to know more about what you're doing. So. Okay. Thank you well, so, so much, much Marty. Jim.